Michael Sneed, currency strategy at BNP Paribas. He joins us. Michael, thank you so much. Welcome to On The Move. I wanted, first of all, to talk about China, because this was a huge surprise in terms of timing. Yesterday, for the first time since 2008, China deciding to cut interest rates. Does that make you optimistic that they're in control of the situation, or does that make you worried because of the timing? It's before the data, and, and it's quite unusual to have such a big move, also before the change of leadership in September. Yes, well, we've seen in currency markets very generally this week uh, we've had risk on due to various positive factors. And the China rate cut uh, really just added to that positive sentiment that we had from Spain recognizing that it needs uh, external support, uh, Greece, uh, sorry, Germany giving some positive uh, comments, um, and also expectations of Bernanke uh, giving something in his statement yesterday. Um, so the PBOC's decision uh, really added to the sentiment, but we've seen today um, that some of this risk appetite is being taken off the table. Mm -hmm. There's concern that the PBOC uh, were preempting uh, the negative data, or the data that we're getting out over the weekend, Which that it could may be, be negative. negative. Exactly. Yeah. And so, uh, Michael, how concerned are you that actually we could be potentially facing a hard landing for China? We, I mean, I guess this, you know, we talk about the European crisis, we talk about U.S. growth, but actually, if China goes through a hard landing, will it take everyone else with it? Well, the PBOC still have plenty of scope uh, to act. Okay. So our economists in China expect that they will implement another policy cut, um, and they will also implement uh, at least two triple R cuts. Um, so in currencies, you know, this is supportive of uh, things like the Aussie dollar. Yeah. And particularly one thing that I think is very important in currency markets at the moment is positioning. And we see that investors have already positioned themselves uh, very short uh, Aussie dollar compared to how they've been positioned in the past. So this means there's already a lot of bad news priced in. Um, and so actually this, the risk is that uh, the positive news uh, surprises to the upside. So, Michael, in terms of Aussie dollar, you can see there 0 0.9860. Is it going to be, be stuck in that range? Are we going to see any movements in, in the next couple of months? I think it's going to be very dependent on, in the short term, on the data uh, out of China. Um, also, uh, the outcome of the Greek election next week. These are two key risk events that we're paying a lot of attention to. Um, and then, in terms of the next couple of months, I think there's going to be a lot of focus on the Fed and whether or not we get further stimulus and uh, whether or not this drives risk appetite in both equity markets and currency markets. How disappointed were you by what Ben Bernanke was saying yesterday, not really giving a clear vision about w what he's ready to do, when he's ready to act, or how much, what form extra stimulus could take? Well, I think one uh, critical thing to keep in mind was when Bernanke was speaking yesterday, he was um, talking to politicians. <coughs> and this is not the kind of backdrop of which he would aggressively Give state. Hints. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know, we weren't particularly surprised. Um, and in fact, because of the comments we've had from uh, Fed speakers earlier in the week, we've had uh, both Evans uh, and Yellen giving fairly dovish comments. Uh, our economists actually think that it's more likely than not that the Fed uh, extends Operation Twist when it meets on the 20th of June. So it does actually ease policy. And Michael, how relevant is it actually, uh, you know, the next Fed meeting is over two days. Does that mean that they are very uncertain about the economic? I mean, this is something that we'll see more and more, these two-day Fed meetings. But certainly, should we be a little bit uneasy that it's going to be a, a more difficult chat? Well, I think what it highlights is that it's going to be a very intense discussion when the FOMC next, meet, when next meets. Um, and they are going to be looking at all the different options. And that actually going into the meeting, um, it is very finely balanced on the outcome. So I think it adds uncertainty to an already uncertain market. Um, and also means that investors between currencies are going to be a little bit cautious about putting on the risk on positions ahead of such events. Michael, let's have a look at euro dollar. Of course, today we had uh, trade data from France, from Germany. That crucial, you know, we find out on Monday, or we hope to find out how much Spanish banks need in terms of money f to recapitalize themselves. What do you do with euro dollar? Well, I think you know, euro dollar we've seen, uh, again, because of the positioning in euro, uh, has been, have, having been very aggressively short uh, up until the beginning of this week. We've seen short covering this week. This provides us uh, with scope for euro dollar turning lower if we get negative events uh, from Spain uh, and from Greece, I think, will be critical. Yeah. So I think we could uh, move back and uh, test uh, the lows that we've seen, so around 123, um, even on a you know, perhaps positive Greek outcome, so the new democracy. Uh, being elected, because we're still going to see some uncertainty as they're going to be approaching the Troika uh, 
to look for a renegotiation of their terms. And how worried, how worried are you about Spanish banks? I mean, we don't know. We've heard figures in terms of estimates on how much they need, 100 billion euros. It, does this look like a, a good figure to you? Or well, are we yeah, going to see more? Yeah, we've, we've been uh, pointing at that kind of figure uh, for actually quite some time now.